Bienvenidos a Mr. Manny Reads. This video will be going over a, a new book, uh, one by Duncan Donatiu, and it is titled Diego Rivera, His World in Ours. Diego Rivera was born in Mexico in a city called Guanajuato, which means the land of frogs. As a boy, Diego enjoyed playing with his trains, but more than anything, he liked to draw. Diego loved drawing so much that when he was a young man, he sailed on a ship across the ocean. He went to the city of Madrid in Spain to study art under the direction of a well-known painter. There he learned the classical way to paint, which means his finished paintings looked very realistic, almost like photographs. After his studies, Diego went to Paris, the capital of France. There he met young artists who were painting in new and exciting ways. He experimented with these new methods of painting himself. One method was called cubism, in which the painting did not exactly resemble its subject but was more composed of geometric shapes, such as squares, circles, and triangles. One day, a politician named Jose Vasconcelos urged Diego to return to Mexico. He wanted Diego and other artists to paint murals around the city about the Mexican people's history and customs. Diego was thrilled by this new project. When he returned to his homeland, Diego traveled through its deserts, mountains, and jungles. He wanted to be inspired by his country. He met people who worked the land, and he visited the ruins of ancient Mexican civilizations, like those of the Aztecs and the Maya. Diego was full of ideas after his trip. With the help of his friends and apprentices, he began to paint murals on large walls so that everyone in the country, rich and poor, young and old, could see and learn from them. In his murals, Diego combined the classical way of painting he had learned as a young man and the new styles of art he had experimented with abroad. But he merged them with a simple yet elegant form of ancient Mexican art that he had grown passionate for after his travels. On the walls of an important government building, Diego painted the history of his country. He painted the struggle of the Mexican people to break free from the Spanish king. He also painted the fight that took place many years later when farmers and workers defended themselves against greedy men who were taking advantage of them. Diego painted his country's dances and traditions, such as La Zundunga, a love dance from the coastal area, and the dance of Los Listones, a ribbon dance from the south. He wanted to celebrate the things that were special to Mexico and wanted Mexicans from all different parts of the land to learn about their culture and feel proud. Diego lived to be an old man. By the time he passed away, he had created many wonderful artworks and was celebrated by people in Mexico as well as around the world. But if he were alive today, what would he paint? Would he paint the way we dress and live? Would he paint the way we play? Would he paint the big city as he painted the ancient Aztec city of Tenochtitlan? Or would he paint students at their desks just as he painted factory workers in the production line? Maybe Diego would paint shops at the mall as he painted street vendors selling flores. Or would he paint the luchadores wrestling in their costumes, just as he painted the Aztec warriors fighting the invading soldiers, the Spanish conquistadores? Would Diego paint our craze for monsters and creatures from outer space as he painted the god Quetzalcoatl the feathered serpent. Diego's murals teach us about the past, but they also show a better future for common people. Diego imagined everyone, men and women, boys and girls, of all ages and nationalities, living together and caring for one another. Today, Diego was not around to make this happen. So it is up to us to make our own murals and bring them to life.